Welcome back, everybody. My name's Tommy McCarthy, and this is Let's Talk Cyber. Well, it is a huge honor for me to welcome one of the most notable personalities in cybersecurity in the whole of the Middle East, His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Al Kuwaiti. Welcome back once again, sir, to Let's Talk Cyber. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Tommy. And that uh, really wonderful that to see great friends, all the friends. And thank you very much for your time on this. Wonderful, Your Excellency. Listen, I am going to keep this short and sweet because there's just some critical things we want to ask you your opinion on. And I'm going to jump straight into 2024 because we saw a lot of things happening, some, some good and some bad. Can you give me a little bit of your reflections on what were the things and the issues that caused most concern for you in 2024? But on the end of that, also, please give me a little bit of information about some of the highlights and some of the successes that you experienced in the UAE in 2024? So that's an important question. And definitely 2024, uh, we've seen so many uh, drawbacks. One of those is cybercrime is still really scoring high. And that increased more than $10 billion, as a matter of fact, in many of those cases worldwide. Here in UAE as well, we've seen so many of such attacks, maybe not in the government, more in the private sector. And this is where we are really eager to make this year less attacks, less loss in uh, data. Uh, that's another thing. Data breaches and ransomware increased by 32% across the whole world as we are under this counter ransomware initiative with the White House and all of the uh, nations, trusted nations there. We've seen the increase of ransomware as well, really hitting us everywhere. Critical infrastructure was impacted really highly as well. And the problem with all of this, we are still yet to see a unified uh, governing policies that really dictate or criminalize many of those uh, cross-border type of attacks. And that's what, uh, what really um, impact us from uh, one side. So definitely 2024 have seen such a perspective. And JISIC, to be specific, uh, we've seen great things. As a matter of fact, collaboration is there. Unity is there. Everybody working together in order to really uh, uh, build that momentum of uh, building resiliency, building collaboration and uh, cooperation across all of the aspects there. Uh, LLM AI brought great things to us from a defensive perspective. And that's what we are actually really eager and continuing doing for the 2025. So that's in a nutshell. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I, I expected nothing less, Your Excellency. What we have seen is a, a huge increase in AI and the challenges in increased threats posed by deep fakes, by fake news, by social media manipulation. What uh, must the public and business communities do to stay ahead of these threats? What's your own opinion on that? So we had, as a matter of fact, a session recently about that specifically, misinformation, disinformation, deep, deep fake, and how AI is enabling all of our adversaries to come together and basically do that. As a matter of fact, have we seen it lately? Uh, everybody is using AI. Maybe five years ago, if you, if you asked me that same question, I will tell you it's only state actors or non-state actors who are related to state actors, kind of an organized group. But today, everybody is using AI, everybody is using such a perspective. And this is why we need definitely to stay ahead of many of those aspects. Definitely collaboration, working together is one thing. PPPP, public-private people partnership is still one of the major things that we need to always campaign for. Uh, technologies and AI itself, it's actually needed to be embedded in many of those uh, platforms to detect that deep fake, to really uh, have a signature, have a watermark, have something that tell us that is based on a deep fake. There is no uh, merit behind this or that news. There is uh, nothing in that perspective. The problem is not only in the deep fake or the misinformation we've seen using AI now to actually find a zero day into any of those systems, exploit that zero day, extract the data, and all of this is done with uh, technologies that are still uh, young AI in, in, in that perspective. And definitely everyone is using that. So it's, it's, it's challenging to us all. And I hope that JISEC will bring us together to really finding many of those opportunities to solve such perspectives. 
Yeah, it's interesting, Your Excellency. Um, I was in Dubai just a few weeks back uh, attending the Global Government Cloud Forum, and it was on everyone's lips, AI, AI, AI. So yes. it's no, there's no question the collaboration piece, and you touched on collaboration, and this is the this is one of the mo most important elements for me, is the genuine value that we see when it comes to collaboration in the UAE, all brought together under the umbrella of JISEC. You know, we've seen so many great opportunities, some amazing outcomes from JISEC. From your own point of view, how important are events like JISEC to really unify this global cyber army that we've all got together to combat the threats, to to resolve the challenges and to plan about how we move forward. From from your own point of view, how important is JISEC for this international collaboration? So definitely it is it is a pivotal, it is very, very, very important, given the fact that UAE is really leading in many of those uh, competitiveness uh, ranking across the whole world, be it in the digital transformation, be it in the cybersecurity, global cyber index, as well as in uh, so many of uh, AI uh, adaptation in the government itself. So having everybody coming under that one roof, not only networking, not only really creating and uh, and really innovating in new ideas in that perspective, but actually putting solutions, putting things that we could depend our government, our national security, our privacy, as well as our uh, data need to be actually really uh, governed in many of those aspects. And that's what when bring all of those entities, be it government, entities, academia, civil liberties, whoever is actually coming here, and you've seen it last year, it yes. brought as uh, literally everybody under one roof, and there was some good warm discussion that are really came up with the great uh, initiatives that are, as a matter of fact, already executed in many of those aspects. We've seen counter ransomware initiative where information sharing now actually reached more than 68 entities. We've seen cyber drill. That's the biggest cyber exercise, countering and the only place where you see more than 140 countries united against this, such cyber adversaries. All of them really building that resiliency, countering such attacks, simulated attacks. It was it was nations against, uh, against AI or kind of... Uh, uh, machines that are trying to hack and really find some uh, or many of those vulnerabilities. It was it was really a game changer. And this year we're doing it more and bigger and even better, inshallah, in that respect. And that's the one thing that amazes me since I've been attending JISEC. I go away thinking, wow, how can they get this even better? How can they build on this? But you still manage to do it. One of the things that resonates a lot of the time, and I hear you say this often, is the element on focusing on our people, educating people, training people, keeping them aware of the threats that we, we're all exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be me as, a, as an individual at home using my laptop or an administrator in a national oil company sharing information, making sure they're doing the right things. How important is it that we continue to educate and train make us, our, our employees aware of the threats. From your own point of view, how high up is that in your agenda? So, yeah, that's, again, a great question here. You know, in UAE, every year, the leadership with their vision, as well as the whole uh, entities, comes up with a name of that year. We had a year of tolerance. We had a year of giving. We have a year of, uh, of peace. This year is a year of community, a year of society, a year of people. And this is where we are, as a matter of fact, bringing people as the main interest of many of those aspects. We need not only to train them, and here I'm not saying over-train things in that perspective, but a balanced training, something that we would love to strike where we bring an awareness to all uh, sectorials of our society, be it the kids. We have a great uh, Ministry of Education curriculum, as a matter of fact, embedded in many of those aspects. We have women. Women in cyber, and you see, we've seen them last year and this year, inshallah, they are really coming in a big as well. We have youth in cyber. So training, training, training is the first line of defense. We always depend on our society to have that first line of defense. If you know, and I'm sure you know that still, the weakest link is those social engineering and phishing, as well as many of those scams and fraud. That's still yet more than 80 or 70% of many of attacks is because of 
uh, human error is because of uh, social engineering. Someone tricking someone to click on or open any of the... Our goal is to make sure there is a uh, thinking again before doing any step and those takes only splits of seconds and that's what we are trying to spread the awareness across the whole society with the training 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 your excellency it goes without saying as usual you've covered every base for me in 10 minutes and 28 seconds you know we could go on forever more i, I appreciate the time you've given us i know our listeners are really excited about what they can expect from jisec this year Dr. Mohammed Al Kuwaiti, all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for joining us and let's talk cyber. Let's talk cyber. Thank you very much, Dennis. Appreciate it, sir. Wonderful.